Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase, let's get to it. In today's video, we're gonna talk about four practical use cases of blockchain technology. And to put it simple, blockchain is a kind of database or ledger, just as a company might store information on an Excel spreadsheet. This is just another way. So when we hear that term blockchain, just to keep it simple, it's a place to store information. And the reason why someone or a company would use blockchain technology is because it comes with enhanced trust and transparency. This allows companies to work together. They don't have to rely on just one company running the project. And it also gives us traceability because a blockchain is data and it can't be edited. Once it is on the blockchain, you can't go back and change it. So this lets us find out the truth and follow things along the path or traceability when things happened, the location and the time they happened. And that brings us to the first example of blockchain technology, and that is supply chain. This is the process of following a item from the beginning to the end. For example, when it comes to food, it would follow the product from being, you know, let's say it's a cow being raised on the farm, then brought to a processing center, then shipped on a boat, and then put in the supermarket. And the reason why blockchain is so important in supply chain is because it allows us to track a product in real time. We have had outbreaks many times in the past of food being contaminated, and it takes us a long time to find out where this happened, what was the problem, but with blockchain technology, because it's so transparent and because it's so easy to track, we can find out where that outbreak occurred and fix it immediately. So that's number one, supply chain. Number two is medical records or medical information. For anyone that works in the health field, they know, they understand that it's very annoying to coordinate with multiple parties when it comes to patient care. Let's say you have doctors and nurses and physical therapists and speech therapists, and they're trying to all work together in collaboration to treat a patient. But many times they have to you know, email and call and get this information and that information, and it becomes very time consuming. But when you have everything on a blockchain in one place, all the medical providers have access to it. They can find the information they need for that patient quicker and it makes it more safe for the patient and it also makes it more time efficient for the providers so that they can continue to provide care for other people. Number three of a practical use case of blockchain technology is identity management. So as you know, whenever we go around places, we have to carry our passport or maybe carry our, or carry our ID. But what if our identity was on a blockchain so that wherever we went, it would be available? For example, let's say you lost your passport while you were traveling in a country. But luckily, because your identity is on a blockchain, when you arrive at the airport, you can provide them with your information or maybe you'll have a private key and it will bring up all your information and they can verify that that is actually you. So that's number three, identity on the blockchain. And example number four of a real use case of blockchain technology is real estate data. Many times when it comes to real estate, real estate, well actually not many times, all the time, it's all of these databases and they might not all have the same information, they might not all have the same truth. Truth, if a rec, if, <clears throat> sorry, if a real estate case goes to court, you have to look in this database and that database to see how much the real estate property was paid for. Who actually owns it? At what date did they become the owner? And it becomes very messy. But what if all that information can be on one ledger, on one database, and you have the record right there? Again, it's transparent, it's open, and also it's traceable. You can, you can find exactly what you're looking for at a very quick speed. So you might be looking at all these cases that I mentioned to you. And you might be wondering, this doesn't make any sense. You know, I know about Bitcoin. I know that it's a blockchain and blockchain means that anyone can use it. It's open to the world. But that is true only when it comes to Bitcoin because Bitcoin runs on a public blockchain. And in a public blockchain, there's no privacy. Anyone can look at it. Anyone can add to it. Anyone has access. But there is something known as a private blockchain. And when it comes to a private blockchain, there is privacy. A private blockchain is when you have two or more parties controlling the network. And this is different than one party only controlling because if only one party controls that network, it is totally centralized. But just by adding two, two parties to control or even three or four, 
the more you add, the more decentralized it becomes. And this is how you get companies that are able to trust and be transparent and work with each other. An example would be IBM working with Walmart to run a private blockchain for food supply chain to track food from the beginning to the end. Now, if only one of these companies controlled the network, let's say it was just IBM, then this would be your typical centralized database or it wouldn't even be a blockchain. So Walmart would have to put all of their trust into IBM. But with a private blockchain, for example, IBM and Walmart are using something called Hyperledger, Hyperledger Fabric, which is a kind of private blockchain. They don't have to put all the trust in one party. They can put it between them two equally and they can also add permissions. If they wanna work with other companies in their supply chain, they can grant them access to that blockchain. So that's how you have all of these, these blockchain ideas. They would run on a private blockchain. For example, medical records. There's no way this can ever be ran on a public blockchain. There are many strict rules and regulations about patient data. So this would have to be ran on a private blockchain and medical providers would need special access, special permission to read and write on that ledger. And it is important to note that when you have a cryptocurrency or a token, it's really only needed for a public blockchain. The reason it's, it's needed for a public blockchain is because there's no incentive for people to take the time, energy, and resources to make sure that a public blockchain is running. For example, when it comes to Bitcoin, why should anyone care that Bitcoin is working? The reason that they care is because there's an incentive measure. There's a token on the network, and as the system runs, as you add to the system, you get rewarded with a token. But then when it comes to a private blockchain, they don't need a token, they don't need a cryptocurrency because their incentives is within their company. They wanna do a good job, they wanna provide a good service because this directly affects them and it will bring them profits and it also enhances their reputation. So again, a public blockchain does need a token or a cryptocurrency for it to run. A private blockchain does not need a token. The incentive, the motive, is already there for the company to do a good job and make sure that their blockchain is running. So when you go on CoinMarketCap and you see all of these cryptocurrencies, it's very important to ask. The project, this blockchain, I'm just gonna take a random example. Let's say I'm at number 87 on CoinMarketCap right now, REN token, or number 88, Golem token. You have to ask, is this a public blockchain that needs a incentive or a cryptocurrency for it to continue to run, or is it just a money grab from the company or the organization that developed that blockchain? I hope that you found value in today's video. And if you like my content, go down below, please, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.